Merry Christmas Eve Eve digital world and welcome back to yet another episode of Spliced In Later, the third for this week of our series of episodes we are pumping out as fast as we can before Christmas hits in a couple of days so we can all enjoy that Christmas break and I hope you're all keeping well out there. I know that COVID once again is the Christmas present that is the gift that keeps on giving so I hope that wherever you are you are safe and happy and you are able to spend Christmas with your loved ones or in the manner that you want to or see fit because it's uh, the wild west once again but fingers crossed for you for that one while at the same time I hope that you are able to enjoy the many many movies and TV shows that have been coming at us over the past couple months because boy I have there have been plenty of content for this channel and plenty of updates right, you know, on incoming top 10 movies of 2021 which should be coming to you very early in January. Today we are presenting our final review of this week, potentially of the year if I don't get to see this other movie before January hits us. And it is one that I am very excited to have seen and excited to talk to you about. With an aside that today I also got my vaccination booster, which is wonderful. I love feeling safe and happy and protected. But once again, unluckily, I'm having an adverse reaction to it. So Everything is fine, don't worry. I'm just a bit flat and fluey and tired, so my energy is lacking. So if you find that this episode is shorter than normal, or if I am sound more confused and befuddled than normal, don't be alarmed. That's just the way the cookie has crumbled, or the cards have been drawn, or whatever metaphor you want to use. But I do want to talk about this movie, and I enjoyed watching it only moments ago. So let's talk about... The Matrix Resurrections, the fourth film in the Matrix franchise starring Keanu Reeves as Neo and Carrie Ann Moss as Trinity. So a bit of housekeeping once again. I love the original Matrix, The Matrix. It came out in 1999. I thought it was a fantastic movie and I liked the franchise as a whole, the sequels that came out too. I did go back very recently, only last weekend, and watch all three of them because based from the one trailer that I had seen for The Matrix Resurrections, I thought it might be worth just remembering what happened and who all these characters were besides our trio of main characters and the evil Agent Smith because I'm sure they'll be popping up, I'm sure there'll be references with a movie like this that comes out 20 years after the last one, there's always going to be that nostalgia level, those callbacks, those things which they expect you to remember. And then since I haven't watched The Matrix religiously every year, I thought let's go back and check it out. As expected, The Matrix 1999 holds up tremendously. It may be one of the best science fiction films of all time, if not one of the best films of all time. It is a great hero's journey story set in an intriguing concept of Keanu Reeves as Neo, also Thomas Anderson, who is a guy living his normal life until another man called Morpheus, played by Lawrence Fishburne, shows up and goes, hey, you're actually in The Matrix, which is this computer-generated simulation created by machines. It's actually the far future. Machines have nearly wiped out the human race and what humans do exist have been plugged into the matrix to be kept as sheep while machines use them for batteries. Inside the matrix, they are governed by these computer programs called agents which hunt down and execute any troublemakers as well as people who have managed to unplug themselves from the matrix and have now gone back in to save other people a la Morpheus and his crew, including Trinity, played by Carrie Ann Moss, who has a romance relationship with Neo. When you plug into the Matrix, when you're unplugged from the Matrix and then go back in, you can do all sorts of incredible things once your brain adjusts to the idea that the world you're in isn't real, so the laws of physics do not apply to you, which means that you can dodge bullets, you can leap off tall buildings, you can run across walls, you can even fly if you're so lucky. The Matrix launched that whole craze in 1999, especially wearing dark trench coats and sunglasses while you're walking up walls and dodging bullets. And this was the one that started it all. It's a great movie with a great villain as well in Agent Smith, played by Hugo Weaving, an agent that's a little bit more menacing and more off the walls than his computer program partners who loved chewing the scenery and had some very great quotable lines. A very self-contained movie, but one that was surprisingly successful. So of course they turned it into a franchise. The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions, looking back on them, I liked them a lot when they first came out. I think looking back on them with age dies, I still really enjoy them, but they're a bit of a mess. It was brave enough that it was one of those first few franchises that said, we want to tell 
a story that goes across two films. We want to have part one in film A and part two in film B. So both of them were released in the same year, just six months apart. But you can really tell they didn't really know exactly how to do it, if they were going to make two separate stories with a continuing plot, or if they were just going to make one long plot and then just decide somewhere in the middle to stop the story and then continue on later on. As such, it's very jarring when Reloaded just suddenly ends and you do feel like you haven't really solved anything that's been going on. And the juxtaposition between the two means that some characters wind up doing nothing in the third film because most of their action was done in the second film and it hasn't balanced that up. It's particularly Morpheus, who spends a majority of the third film sitting in the passenger seat of Jada Pinkett Smith's ship while they fly around. Particularly Neo, who really only goes into the Matrix one time, otherwise he's just sitting in a chair as well. Trinity unceremoniously is, is pulled from the movie. I won't spoil how or why if you haven't seen it. And even Agent Smith, who everyone says, oh man, he was great in all those Matrix movies. He's really only in both of those movies about five separate incidents. And because it's stretched out over two movies, he tends to disappear for a long period of time. But putting all that aside, that's just teething troubles for trying to make something like this. The project was ambitious and it did have a proper resolution to the story, mostly. The war between the humans and the machines was done. Neo made the ultimate sacrifice to save everyone. So looking back on that, watching them with fresh eyes, and then going into the Matrix Resurrections, I was split. I was half apprehensive because I could see the problems with being overambitious with Matrix 2 and 3 and how they struggled to actually give things to certain characters and that perhaps the story didn't need to be... Uh, the story was too convoluted enough without trying to go more into it. But I also kind of wanted it because I did feel like even though Neo made the ultimate sacrifice, him and Trinity... They got the rough end of the stick with the movie. They both do their thing and then they're gone. And they don't really get a heroic... Set. I mean, they do get a kind of heroic send-off, but there's not real resolution to that. Neo's final fate, where he supposedly dies at the end of the third one, comes four minutes before the movie ends. And it sort of just goes, all right, the movie's over, bye-bye. And he's, he's carried away and you don't really know. If there wasn't going to be a four film, I guess you could say, okay, we'll never really know what happened, but perhaps he'll be back. But now that we know he's back, I am hoping that, I mean, when you hear about a film like this coming out, you go, okay, so it's going to be the first of probably another trilogy, knowing producers and filmmakers and money. But at the very least, I hope they would have a satisfying conclusion to Neo and Trinity's story. So now I've watched it. Depending where you are in the world, it is definitely available online, but you may be able to go see it at the cinemas. It is a hard time to get to the cinemas, I know, at the moment, with the the need to avoid going to potential exposure sites so you can spend time with your family at Christmas, actually spending time with your family at Christmas so you can't get to the movie theatres. If you can, I do, I do suggest it. I would have liked to have gone and see this film at the cinemas, but I just don't know when I'm going to be able to get the chance, and I really, really wanted to see it before all the spoilers hit the internet. So that's how I've seen it, but again, to each their own, how you want to do it. My knee-jerk reaction is that I really, really, really enjoyed it. It was much better and more linear and more, more competently made than I expected it to be. It does have its faults, but I don't think that they're enough to say that the movie is bad or to throw shit at the movie, like I'm seeing quite a few people online doing at the moment, and I'll mention that in a minute. I think in terms of the track record of movies that have come back to franchises that have been done and dusted for 20 years, this one is very competently done. There seems to be a lot of love. There's a lot of self-awareness to it as well. A lot of what made those movies good is still here, especially the lovability of seeing Keanu Reeves on screen. And you could pick it apart if you wanted to, but then you have to go back and accept that the Matrix franchise has not been this pristine thing that made three great movies and this one's just ruining your opinion and reputation. The Matrix franchise is one really, 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 really good movie and two slightly bloated, bit stumbling films that still have a lot of good stuff, good content, good characters and heart and all of that. And this is a nice cap to that. I do believe it's probably the start of another franchise, but if it's not, it's fine. It's fine enough as, a, as an epilogue to Neo and Trinity's story. And that's the most important thing. It gave me exactly what I wanted. And we'll get into that now. I can't really talk about the plot too much because as as with Spider-Man No Way Home, a lot of what's in this movie 
should be natural surprises. I was really, really pleased with the first trailer for The Matrix Resurrection. It was a very vague trailer that was very well put together and cut with that White Rabbit song. And I thought, I don't know what's going to happen in this movie, but I am intrigued. I want to see it. Well done to who made that trailer. Unfortunately, the powers that be must have seen that trailer and gone to them and went, you, you didn't show anything. You didn't see, you didn't reveal who this person is playing. You didn't reveal who this person is playing. Reveal it or people may not come to the movie. So they released a second trailer, which I didn't see. But unfortunately, when you go online, all the news bites, the, the, the clickbait, all of that puts up pictures of these characters and go, new trailer reveals this person is playing this person. I was like, I didn't want to know that. So I'm not going to do that. If you manage to not see that particular trailer or if you're avoiding trailers and you, because you want to go into this movie fresh eyed, I'm not going to say, boy, I liked that this person returned playing a new iteration of this character. Not going to do that. So I'm going to do the basic plot line for you here, which I think is not too spoilery at all. The Matrix Resurrections picks up about 60 years after the end of the third one. We find Neo or Thomas Anderson seems to be living a normal life he is a computer game or er, game coder game maker who whatever you call him right and he essentially has made a very successful trilogy of games called the matrix a very meta thing everything that happened in the matrix films apparently is just his game that he created he is constantly seeing a therapist because he's having psychotic breaks because he can't differentiate the fact that the Matrix is a game. He thinks it really happened and he really was Neo and all this stuff did happen. Hmm, I wonder where the plot is going to go. Well, of course, eventually he is approached by new iterations of familiar characters or brand new characters such as Bugs, played by Jessica Henwick, who reveal that they are, of course, rebels and Neo is in the Matrix or an upgraded Matrix of sorts and they got to get him out because, as expected, machines and humans are still... still in conflicts of sorts there's a lot there's a bit more going on than just that i do like that it doesn't just go neo sacrifice in the third film led to nothing we just went right back to war it's not exactly the same thing going on there's an explanation as to the different things that are happening and why there is a new matrix and what's actually happening so i think that's pretty good but at the core of the movie is that when he's in the matrix neo is consistently seeing trinity who they uh were broken up and had very tragic fates in the Matrix Revolutions. So Trinity appears to be in his peripheral vision and they have a connection. They seem to long for each other, even though they live completely separate lives and they shouldn't have interacted and all of that. And if the Matrix isn't real, why is she feeling like she's also lived the game that she is playing? And what essentially comes down to is once Neo's out of the Matrix, the mission is now we gotta get Trinity out. Why she's in there, what's happening, the reasons to get her out, you will find out if you watch the movie. Q, plugging in and out of the Matrix, so swapping between being in there and doing all the flips and kicks and, and the cool outfits and the sunglasses and the red blue pill poo, blue poo, excuse me, agents, programs, all of that stuff, and then juxtapositioning with the real world set in the future where the humans fly about in their hovercrafts, plugging people into the Matrix, avoiding machines, and living in their secret cities underground. That's about it. Can't say much more than that. If you want to know more, go see the movie. What I really, really liked about the movie was it was very entertaining. It was two hours and 27 minutes, so it's a long one. But contrary to what I'm hearing other people say, it didn't feel that long. It did feel like a very cohesive story that went from point to point to point. And they kept having reveals and more information was added and you always went to new locations, so it felt fresh. Plus, I guess at the end of the day, I didn't really need to rewatch all the Matrix films because it does throw in reminders and flashbacks and clips just in case you don't know what they're talking about or who this new character is as return and what they're referring to but i don't think the movie gets bogged down in that i think it works it in because it plays into neo's potential psychic break he sees these flashes because he's recalling in his mind a life that he hasn't lived and he's trying to stop that because he knows oh i'm, I'm going insane i shouldn't be seeing the things i'm seeing so that works really well too at the core though, what makes this movie fun to watch is Keanu Reeves returning as Neo and Carrie Ann Moss returning as Trinity. On my rewatch, and especially watching this new film as well, The Matrix at its core is the love story between Neo and Trinity. They're, they're doomed romance as it were. They meet, 
they fall in love, they go through terrible trials and tribulations, they're constantly split apart and they keep trying to get back to each other and they're constantly being pulled away. And that you can tell the love between them is real and you want to see them bright defy all odds and reunite and get back together. And that is something the movie never loses sight of. It's, all, it's constantly trying to set up the new world that the Matrix is in, if potential sequels are coming, including the new cities, the new machines, the new rebel fighters, the new versions of computer programs and all of that stuff. But it never loses the sight of Neo's mission, which is to reunite with Trinity, his one true love. And Trinity, vice versa. And I think Trinity as well, she gets, while well, she's sidelined for uh, about the first half of the movie, when she finally gets involved in on the action, it does her justice in a way that she lost in the third film as well. She really comes into her own in terms of her skills and her character and puts her on equal setting essentially with Neo in terms of importance to saving the world and the Matrix and being a hero. So that was great. And Keanu Reeves, great. I can't say, I don't know for certain if he does really well at reprising Neo because Keanu Reeves sort of plays the same type of character in all his roles, especially Neo, John Wick, even the most recent Bill and Ted, Ted had sort of turned into the Neo John Wick, which is this very, I want to say stoic, but it's also very monotone. He, he, the way he reacts to things, whether it's happy, sad, surprised, confused, it all sounds the same. And God bless Keanu Reeves. I think he's trying, but it doesn't, It it, it you notice it a bit more with this film after seeing him in other franchises. But he's on point with how I remember Neo being, so that's great. Apart from Neo having longer hair and a beard, because that's just Keanu Reeves' look now, he's the same Neo we've always known and loved, so that was great too. The new cast as well all have their moments to shine, and I really liked them. Jessica Henwick especially as Bug, the new, essentially the new Morpheus, the new captain of the Rebels who's trying to rescue Neo and put a stop to the Matrix. She's a lot of fun to watch. She's very relatable as well, which I thought was great. I liked everyone in her crew as well. The characters that I can't say, but the actors, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II and Jonathan Groff are also really good too. Can't say who they play. You can probably work it out, but they do nice new iterations of previous characters, give them their own little spins and they're not just imitating them, which is great. Neil Patrick Harris is good in here too as Neo's psychiatrist. And because of the mental breakdown that Neo is having, you can see that he potentially either wants to help him or hurt him. You have to make up your own mind about that as well. And then quite frequently, there's some cameos for some other classic Matrix characters as well, which I won't reveal in case you don't know, but it's, it's fun to see a majority of them. What I think the movie struggles from is not a huge deal, but I think it's just something that a lot of franchises have which is um, when you come back to a movies that have essentially been done, Matrix, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Star Trek, Coming to America, all of that, you come back 20 years later and you go, why are we doing this? What's the point? What's the purpose of this? And it does feel like that in The Matrix 4 as well. Like this movie doesn't need to really exist. I personally like it because I get my Neo Trinity conclusion but it doesn't really add anything to the ending of the last Matrix story. And unless, if there are no sequels after this film, it doesn't really do anything to set up a new franchise. It's just, the, it's this thing. But to the movie's credit, it's very aware of it. It's the most meta sequel to a franchise I've seen in quite some time. The fact that Neo's Matrix psychic break thing is that the Matrix is games and in the movie as well, he's constantly being asked, when are you making the Matrix 4? When are you making the Matrix 4? We want more money, which means Matrix is a, pro is a product that will give us more money if we make a fourth, and hopefully a fifth, and a sixth, and a seven. So the movie is saying, yes, we are aware why this movie is being made. You can say, oh, it's being made because we still have story to tell, and we wanted to revisit these characters. But at the end of the day, movies like this come about because the powers that be who want money go, what can we do? What can we assure that we can make that people will go and see without us trying to convince them to see? There are no new original ideas anymore, as it has been infamously said. Why come up with a brand new concept and a brand new story and then have to release trailers and do interviews to try and explain to people, yes, this is a movie you should come and see. Gone are the days when a star appeal is why people would go and see a movie. You don't have your Arnold Schwarzeneggers or your Sylvester Stallones where people go, I'll just see a movie because that he's in it. So I can assume it's going to be an action movie. 
No, now it's, if we say a Matrix 4 is coming, if we say a Coming to America 2 is coming, people will go and see it because they liked the first one. Doesn't matter what they see for trailers and things because if you're like Jordan of Spliced In Later, it doesn't matter if you think it's going to be terrible. You liked the original thing, so you're going to go and see what this one is. But the movie, in a tongue-in-cheek way, goes, yes, but we're doing our best. And I like that. Summing up, I give The Matrix Resurrections an 8 out of 10. It doesn't crack my top 10 movies of the year, but it was surprisingly enjoyable. It was a lot of fun. The two and a half hours flew by. It was great revisiting this world and the characters. The action looked good. The Matrix stuff was a good reminder of, of me watching the old ones as well. And I think it's a good epilogue to that story. It's It resolves some unlingering questions about Neo and Trinity. If you really, really like The Matrix, I think you'll really like this film. If you really like Keanu Reeves and John Wick, I think you'll really like this movie. If you like a good action movie, a good mind-bending sort of thing, you will like this movie too. I think it's a good summer movie. And with this and Spider-Man No Way Home, you've got some good options to go check out at the cinemas this Christmas period. So check it out if you want to. If you don't want to, that's also fine. There you are. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you all stay safe and kind and loving to each other over Christmas. And I will be back. Not soon. We'll definitely have at least a week off. But I will be back very early January to most likely review The King's Man, which is the last movie I want to see before I present my top 10 movies of 2021, which I'm very excited to do because it is a much better list this year than the list I had to present you with with 2020 where three of the films on there I was not happy that they were on the top 10 it's just by process of not seeing many films that year that's what was there I've seen a ton of films this year and it was it's very hard to cut some off the top 10 because there's been a lot of good stuff so I'm excited to bring that to you when I can but otherwise I will catch you all then and again stay safe and Merry Christmas to you all and once again if I haven't already said Thank you for tuning in to these Spliced and Later episodes. If you have been listening frequently, if you tune in every now and then, however you want to do it. This is a fun little hobby that I'm doing. I'm not doing it for profit. I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it to be good at it. I know it's terrible technologically. I stumble over my words. It's definitely not for everyone. In fact, it's probably for a very few people. But if you're one of those people that do like it and do consistently listen, I do appreciate it. it. It means a lot to me to see even one view or comment or anything on this stuff because it means, you know, it's at least somebody is paying attention or has noted my opinion, however crap it may be. Alrighty, I will say goodbye once again. Merry Christmas, and I will catch you on the next Spliced In Later. Adios, muchachos. I'll catch you next time.